This is LA Live from Los Angeles, welcome to the Dr. Aaron Show. We're all about manifestation, transformation, and breakthroughs. It's time to claim your birthright of prosperity, vitality, and love. So grab your tea or coffee because together we're awakening the world. May you live your truth. Have you ever desired something so deeply in your life? Maybe you've desired to have an intimate relationship, finding the love of your life. Or maybe you've desired to have a lot of prosperity and make a lot of money. Or maybe you've desired to tap into source and awaken to the truth of who you are. Or maybe you've desired to move to a new location or whatever it is. But something is stopping you and you don't know what. So you question, what is my destiny? So today's podcast is all about universal law of destiny. Do we have a pre-destiny or do we create our destiny? And that's what we're going to discuss. So welcome to Dr. Aaron podcast. We come together each day to know the truth, live on spiritual principle and align with universal law. We truly believe that when somebody awakens, they have a gift and message to bring to the world. And together we're awakening the world. We're all about trained, developing soul entrepreneurs, spiritual coaches, spiritual practitioners, new thought ministers, and doctors of divinity. We teach universal law, metaphysics, recognizing that you are source. There's nothing outside of you that right here, right now is heaven or hell if we choose to create it. So let's do this thing. Universal law of destiny. Today is a series. We're on number 32 of 52 series of universal law. And today is universal law of destiny. Upanishad states, you are what your deepest desire is. As is your desire, so is your intention. As is your intention, so is your will. As is your will, so is your deed. As is your deed, so is your destiny. So I remember hearing that years ago, you know, your deepest desire is your destiny. And you'd be like, please, I desire, you know, X, Y, and Z, and I ain't got it, right? So let's break on down what this is. The law of destiny states, what you truly desire is your destiny. Your greatest will is that which prevails within your life. It is the sum of your consciousness and actions. And at the core of you is the creator of your destiny, of the physical realm, a unique divine design. The extent to which you have clarity of your desires and specifically inform universal law is the extent to which you will experience the destiny you consciously desire. Okay, so let's break this one down. So I was working with a client the other day and kind of birthing their truth and getting clear. We've already done a lot of uh, trauma work and all that stuff getting out of the way. And recognizing that they're one of their greatest gifts and brilliancies, if you will. That's a word. (laughs) Their genius is uh, writing. They're really good at writing. Brilliant writer. And getting more into it recognizing what they're really committed to. One of my jobs as a master spiritual coach is to help people, of course, release their limited beliefs, limited identity, get out of their way, and then birth what really matters to them. What are their core values and what is it that they truly desire for their life and aligning to that for themselves. And in, and in this session, recognizing that their level of commitment was not to be a, a writer as a career. They have a traditional job And they really value and desire to, you know, have time with their friends, go out and hang out, have their job. But even though they really love writing, it doesn't mean that it is their destiny to become some profound, world-renowned writer, right? So just looking at the level of the desire, what is it that they truly desire with this client? And you can take a look at their life and see what they truly are, what they truly desire, right? We see this all the time with our friends or family or entrepreneurs. I witness it all the time developing soul entrepreneurs. And so the point is, is that, you know, I can work with a soul entrepreneur and they can say, I want to become a great writer and I want to make millions of dollars and I want to, you know, take a quantum leap out of my traditional job. But when we get down to it, The reality is that they must not desire it enough. There's a deeper desire that's standing in the way of what their destiny is, if you will. This client's desire was a lot of comfort, a lot of, you know, having 
a decent life that is balanced and stuff. And there's nothing wrong with that. My job as a master spiritual coach is to help people not have delusional goals that aren't their truth, that it really actually isn't their deepest desire, that we, we actually want to close the gap, coming to a place that actually is authentic in their goals so that they can release feeling guilt that they haven't, you know, accomplished those goals so they can align with their truth and actually live their destiny, live out their destiny. And for this client, they recognize that they actually really like the comfort of having a traditional job. They like actually having time to hang out with friends and they do love writing, but it's more of a hobby. There was actually a, 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 a it's very unusual because usually I have clients and they break through big things and they, you know, take on huge uh, goals and they live out some huge dream. And other times, there can be clients that recognize that, that, that it's actually not their deepest desire and they actually find major freedom in coming to this realization that they get to actually enjoy exactly who they are and give up some big goal trying to keep up with the Jones or some big influencer online, right? So we have to look at the law of destiny, recognizing what is it that you truly, truly are committed to? What is it your deepest desire? And we want to know that that is actually your destiny. You'll see this again over and over. You'll see people say, I really, really, really want to find the love of my life, my twin flame, my, you know, the one. And yet their actual desire is to, you know, it's a commitment and a desire to stay in pain and suffering. That's their actual desire because that's what they do over and over again. And we recognize we do limited, release limited beliefs and do the trauma. But even after that, they actually recognize that actually maybe part of it is that they have a bigger commitment to staying comfortable and being independent and not actually working through the walls that it takes to work through to have a deep, intimate relationship and, and deep commitment with somebody, right? So we take a look at what is really your deepest desire, which really comes down to what is your deepest commitment? You know, what are you truly committed to? Because that really is your destiny. Desire is what you really desire because you actually keep putting energy into it and this is what you're committed to. And I see it over and over with clients, the ones that are like, I don't know how, but I'm, I am so committed to doing all my trauma work. I'm so committed to my spiritual awakening. I'm so committed to bring in truth to the world, I know, I, I look at my clients, I'm like, I know exactly who's going to be successful at this because they show up consistently, no matter what, they don't have any excuse, they don't have things that come up in their life, they literally show up all the time because I know it is their deepest desire. And so I know it's their destiny. I know exactly where people's destiny is because I can see if it, there's nothing wrong with not showing up. Maybe they have a commitment towards, you know, hanging out with their friends or being, you know, with their family and being available to travel with their husband all the time. It's fine, but just know this is your destiny. Like this is who you are and this is what you're up to. And so you're going to find balance. So just don't, don't have some huge goal of thinking that you're going to become, you know, a world-renowned spiritual teacher when it's not your main focus. It's okay. There's nothing wrong with that, right? So this brings me to um, another conversation I had with another friend uh, over coffee the other day. And we were talking about our geniuses because I was uh, telling them that they were, you know, their geniuses are so funny, hilarious. And I was like, you missed your calling as being a comedian, you know? And they're like, yeah, but that would be like, really hard to be, you know, out and be a comedian. I'm not, I'm not committed to it. I love doing it. I love making my friends laugh. I love all that, but it's not, it's not my destiny as far as, you know, a career goes. And we're just talking about how it's interesting how you can have a, a genius and a brilliance, but not necessarily be desire, a deep desire to bring that to the world. Right. And they said, you know, your, your big genius, Aaron, is your relentlessness in, in what you, your expertise in what you're doing, you know, what you do. And I go, yeah, you know, it's really interesting because I'll, I'll never forget, like I had this moment and I was downtown Los Angeles and I was looking over the city was years ago. And I remember I'd already been on this spiritual track for many, many years, just so committed to the work, so committed to my own inner healing, so committed to revealing the truths of the universe and my true nature. And in that moment, I was on top of this building downtown Los Angeles. And I remember in this moment thinking, I am going to hand my life even more over to this work. 
I decided in that moment I was going to become a doctor of divinity and finish out. I would think I was in spiritual practitioner at that point in time. And I decided I was going to become a new thought minister and I was going to become a doctor of divinity. And when I look back on my journey, it has not always been easy. But I know this, I never, ever, not one time questioned if I was on the right path or not. I never one time questioned, should I give up? Should I not give up? Even when like I used to work for free for years with clients and things like that. And I remember I look back on this and and I know that I've never questioned it one time. So how is it that one area in my life, I've been, it has been my deepest desire, my deepest commitment. And other areas of my life, not so much. You know what I mean? Like, I want to invite you to right now take a look at your life and take a look at where are you really committed? Where, where do you spend your time? What do you know that no matter what, this is what you do? This is what you do, okay? And you can take a look at this. And I talked about this before years back. I was in a leadership program. We we're talking about commitment. We we're talking about the distinction undeclared commitments. And I was looking at what what the mental equivalent is of my life, right? What, what do I have? If you take a look at, you know, yourself or myself and you go, clearly, what is this person committed to, right? And there was this profound moment I had around health. I thought, I thought I was committed to being healthy, but actually my true commitment was to being skinny. What I noticed and recognized was I was like, oh, if my genes fit okay, I can eat a little junk food. If my genes start to get, you know, a little tight, then I reel in the junk food and I work out a little bit more. I realized in that moment, I wasn't committed so much to health. I was committed to being thin. And I have a great relationship with food, don't get me wrong. No dysfunction in that um, anymore at all. And I'm really healthy in that realm. But I recognized what I was truly committed to. And I had to giggle a little bit, recognizing like, oh, this is actually what I'm actually committed to. So let's not pretend that I am so committed to health. I'm more committed to, you know, that balance of having fitting into my genes and being able to eat, you know, 90% organic and then having some junk food along the way. So there's nothing right or wrong with that. Could I change that? Yes, if it was my deepest desire to change that, okay? But that's just, that's the truth. I'm not going to lie. I'm going to be very vulnerable and tell you that's my truth. Um, I'm not not skinny like anorexic at all. Like I'm a normal weight and whatever. But the point is, is this, is for you to take a look at your life and recognize what are you really, what do you really desire? What do you, and you can take a look, we we take a look at our lives. It's called mental equivalent. You can take a look at your life and know exactly what you're committed to, exactly what your deepest desires are, because that's what you have right now. That's what you're focusing on. What do you focus on? Where are you, what is your deepest desire? And again, Upanishads, you are what your deepest desire is. As is your desire, so is your intention. As is your intention, so is your will. As is your will, so is your deed. As is your deed, so is your destiny. So who are you? What do you do all the time? Where do you focus your energy? What are you determined and have total relentlessness around, right? I know that in, in you know, the business world or in the investment world, big startup companies, what they actually look for is they bet on the person that actually is starting the company and the team. As they say, don't bet on the horse, bet on the jockey. Because you can know who they are, how committed they are, and what their track record is. And that's what you look for in investing in startups, okay? So I know that I absolutely have only one destiny in my career. And it is for great success completely because I know my conviction. I know who I am. I know my commitment level. And I know that I'm completely relentless and mastering my expertise. So my question for you is what are you truly committed to? What are your, what are your deepest desires? What's your greatest intention? What do you focus on? What's your will? What's your deed? And so you know your destiny. I simply know that you already are in alignment with your destiny because it is already what you're committed to. And if you choose to want to 
transform who you're being, what you're embodying, and what your deepest desire is, then that comes down to deep, deep, profound work, doing your inner trauma work and connecting with source. That is the only way to have a true transformation shift is to do your deep inner work, birth your truth, and connect with source. That is the only way. So right now, taking a look at your life, knowing the perfection of exactly where it is, is it, are you focusing on what you want to focus on? And if not, then it's time to do your inner work and time to change your destiny. I simply know this in my heart and mind, as the other we say, and so it is. I know everything that you desire is your destiny. Have a beautiful day, you guys, and may you live your truth. Thank you for tuning in to Soul Society and Dr. Aaron Podcast. If you've had a calling to be a spiritual leader or coach, you can go to soulsociety.com and check out our free training. If you've received value here, I would love it if you take a moment and give a five-star review. In exchange, I have a ton of free gifts for you. Grab your free awakening book, 40 guided meditations, and digital manifesting masterclass. I also have a free money meditation and worksheet for you so you can begin to break through your scarcity mindset and claim your birthright of prosperity. You can get all of your gifts and learn about our upcoming transformational events in my bio link in both Instagram and Facebook. That's under drerin.tv, which is D-R-E-R-I-N.tv. Also, I'd love to invite you into our free private community on Facebook under groups called Society. That is facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash society. That's S-O-U-L-C-I-E-T-E. Have a divine day and may you live your truth.